Hello, and welcome back to Invent Anything. In this episode, we're going to talk about the magic of inventing around a patent. Inventions keep the world spinning. From fire in the wheel to today's high tech, inventions power change. Turn your inventions into reality. Learn how to get your ideas to market. This is Invent Anything with John Cronin. In this episode, we'll cover basically six topics. The first topic is inventing around a patent, what it is and why we should do it. The second topic is the ad hoc method of inventing around that people use today, and we'll talk about its limitations. But then we'll move on to something very interesting, topic number three, which is an event around checklist process that we've developed that we've used very successfully for over a decade. And then in order to make this more practical, We'll go to topic number four, which is to talk about invent around examples. From that, with the foundation of inventing around, we're going to go to topic number five. Here we're going to talk about strategies that you can use using this invent around process. And then finally, we'll talk about the future of the invent around process. Who does it head and what can we use it for? So I chose these six different areas so that we could truly investigate the invent around process and the magic thereof. But as always, who should be the audience? I would expect that if you're watching this podcast, maybe you've just been served with a patent infringement. Well, if you have, I'm sorry, but this uh, invent around process is definitely for you. Maybe you want to imp imp increase your uh, patent quality filing processes. So this is certainly for you. We have even found people using this invent around process for improving their R&D or innovating. So that would be for you if you're an R&D manager. For those in management or supervisory levels who maybe want to get a briefer on inventing around or designing around, this is certainly for you because you hear this topic off and on, but you might not know what it is. One of the very interesting aspects of inventing around is understanding the strength of competitors' intellectual property patents. So if that's an interest of yours, this podcast is for you. And finally, in many of these podcasts that we do, the idea of improving your own IP strategy. So this is another great tool in the toolbox of IP strategy. So if you're interested in improving your IP strategy, this is for you. So this is John Cronin from Invent Anything. Coming up, surprisingly, you will learn the important topic of inventing around patents. And almost no work has been done in this topical area of inventing around for a process that we've established. So you'll be very surprised. A very important topic is really not focused on, and we'll talk about that. You're listening to Invent Anything with John Cronin. Be sure to visit us at inventanything.net. There's information, articles, and more. And you can leave your thoughts and comments there as well. That's inventanything.net. And now back to John and this episode. Well, let's dive right in. And our first topic, inventing around a patent, what it is, and why you should do it. So first of all, there's basically two reasons why you'd want to venture on a patent. And the first is to make sure that your product is free and clear of others' patents. We cover this pretty thoroughly in the Freedom to Operate episode 14. But there's a second strategic thing that one could do with the inventor on process, and that is to use it on your patent claims of key patents before you file them to help strengthen to get the best patent you can. You know, patents were created to teach, to promulgate the arts, to improve innovation. Uh, but if one chooses not to take a license, nor to, copy, uh, nor to copy illegally, the only way to innovate in the exact space of that patent is to invent around it and to improve the innovation. Inventing is really a creativity exercise. And we covered a lot of creativity exercises in podcasts one through five. But inventing around is a creative exercise for a very specific exercise. So to invent around a patent, you have to invent around its exact claims. You're not gonna be inventing around the idea of a patent or the concept of a patent, because that's just too broad. If you wanna invent around a patent, you have to have the claim sitting right in front of you. One of the things about inventing around is if you're inventing around your own patent, you have to be absolutely ruthless like a devil's advocate process, because your mission psychologically is to get around your own patent. 
On the other hand, that's a little bit easier when you're inventing around a competitor's patent because you will be ruthless and you will not believe that patent claims would cover what they cover. Inventing around usually is a process that's almost naturally done. It's really like an improvement process of inventors. You can patent an improvement of a patent, obviously. And like the original patent owner, if you had patents that you needed, you need to cross license with them to get access to them. So if you don't want to cross license or, or license in general, inventing around is one of the ways that you can come up with technology and products that don't require a license. Also, inventing around basically uh, provides a whole bunch of options for the market. Think about it. Would a person rather remove facial hair with a razor? Or maybe you invent around the razor and you can remove facial hair with a hair with a hair removal cream. Obviously, the razor patent, which is to remove hair, can be invented around with the removal cream. Uh, so there's always different ways, right, to solve the problem in different ways. So inventing around a patent, as I mentioned, it involves having you have free to operate, like in episode 14 that we talked about. Because what it will do if you invent around a patent is and take that direction is you would eliminate willful infringement, which could be costly. Another use for inventing around patents is to uh, get involved in understanding patent litigation and, uh, and inventing around your patent significantly so that you can leverage further patent litigation for yourself. Because if you have a patent and you don't invent around it, then you litigate that patent then the other side might try to invent around it. But if you have a patent and then you invent around your own patent, creating other patents, then that small portfolio of patents could be used to assert against someone. And if they invent around the first patent, they'd very likely fall onto the next patent that you created because you invented around your own patent. So that's kind of, you know, conceptually how the invent around process would work. In topic number two, we actually talk about something very interesting, and that is that the process of inventing around right now is ad hoc at best. We haven't found any kind of formal process to invent around. Certainly there are formal processes for creative problem solving, inventing, et cetera, but we haven't seen formal processes for inventing around. One of the reasons why we have inventing around is it usually comes as a result of an event. You've just been served the litigation. And this is one of the key reasons that you might get pulled into a design around or invent around. But these sessions are really ad hoc. They're driven by an attorney. The inventor and management gets together and they try to assess the claim that they're worried about. They might bring engineers and technical people into the room. And it's basically an ad hoc discussion driven by the attorney. And during these ad hoc processes, you might hear that the patent covers certain infringing products and the patent attorney may ask certain questions about how you might modify your product to get around the patent claim. You see, the attorney is looking to eliminate going forward damages because if they can invent around your patent, then they can get it back into litigation and say that if we are, are infringing, it's only going to be for today backwards because we've invented around the patent today forward. This ad hoc sort of question and answer thing that we've seen happen numerous times really is based upon taking an element of the claim and then trying to replace the claim elements with something that you can do to change your product. The questions are really generally asked by attorneys, but most attorneys don't have this invent around experience. They certainly don't have a process for it. And most good litigation attorneys certainly think this way of inventing around, but yet we have not seen any formal processes. Now, this is not to say that any of the patent attorneys do, are doing are wrong. They just don't create methodological approaches to inventing around patents. Because you see inventing around patents, is done by the inventive mind, generally. Uh, it can be done somewhat by the legal mind, but the legal mind in combination with the inventive mind is much more powerful. So the invent around process that we see is ad hoc at best. Invent around processes basically also are not very robust because they're not practiced routinely. I mean, how many times you actually have a patent litigation? So you really need some firm that may be involved in patent litigation and inventing around that does it over and over and over again to develop a better process. And the other thing is the combination of skills that are required that we have found to invent around patents requires the legal mind, the inventive mind, and a really strong facilitator 
of the process of inventing around. Coming up in a moment, you'll learn about a unique process which we'll call the checklist for inventing around. So you'll always be ready and you'll always be able to invent around. You're listening to Invent Anything with John Cronin. Be sure to visit us at inventanything.net. There's information, articles, and more. And you can leave your thoughts and comments there as well. That's inventanything.net. And now back to John and this episode. So now we're on to topic number three, the invent around checklist process. Let me start with a short story. When I first started my company, uh, I was asked uh, by an investor to go take a look at some company that was in trouble. They were asserting a pa patent uh, infringement assertion potential. This company made basically what you see in the in the ballparks, which is a cheese melter, which apparently, you know, you get a block of 15 pounds of cheese, you put it in this metal box, around this metal box is a coil that heats up the cheese to melt it. And when it's melted, there's a small hole at the bottom of the metal can with an orifice that has a plastic tube that comes out of it. And then they have a peristaltic pump uh, that basically is pulling on that, that plastic and it goes into a nozzle. And with a little lever, you can actually put cheese on your hot dog. Sounds simple enough, right? The company that I was called in to help basically had several million dollars worth of inventory of these cheese devices ready to go. And the investor said they stopped uh, to, to put them on uh, into shipping because some inventor with a patent attorney showed up and said, this is my patent and we and you're violating it. So, we, so just like any company, what do you do when you're about to ship product and you're being said that you infringe? So they asked me to come in and I spent some time reading the patent and I, I flew in, got on a whiteboard and wrote the claim down on the on, on the whiteboard and we had the president the technical people and the patent attorney there uh, for the client and we took a look at the claim and we kind of recognized that the claim had all of those elements but it had what would be called conduction heating that metal wire that went around the can was conductively heating the can so we chose that element and we asked the question is there any other way to heat and one of the technical people said we could do it through convection so that meant you could take that metal wire and stand it away from the metal can with ceramics and basically just have a nice warm wave of heat. And that simple modification invented around the patent claim. So we've established a checklist of inventing around the elements of a patent to get around the patent claims. We've watched over a decade how patents have been invented around. And we've sort of extracted the thinking of audiences that have tried to invent around by observing their thinking. So for example, when we asked someone to invent around the, the razor to shave for hair, someone would say, why don't we use a hair removal cream? So what they've done is they've sort of changed the technology. So that's part of our checklist. So we have a checklist of over 18 items. We use it sequentially. Some checklist items work very well. Some don't work that well. Uh, but just like an airline pilot that has to go through your entire checklist, you, you're hoping to go through every element of the checklist, right? So we go through every element of our checklist because we don't know a priori which part of our checklist will work better. Part of our whole process is to do front-end sizing of the patent. There's a lot of strategy to figure out what claims to invent around and in what sequence. So that's always part of our process. The checklist is really a creativity tool. It should create, believe it or not, 50 or 100, 150 ideas. And the volume of ideas, ideas is where the real value comes from. Some invent around ideas can be used for new current products, and some can be used for future product derivations. If the invent around process is for improving a patent before filing, then the ideas generated in the invent around process can be used for all sorts of things, like new claims, improvements to the patent, specif patent specification, could be used for added trade secrets, could be used for improving the product. So there are many uses for this invent around checklist. And what this does when you go through the invent around checklist, particularly in an infringement case, is it allows the executives to see the risk involved in, def in defending themselves against uh, the infringement. Because if it's hard to invent around, it's very likely that it's gonna be a hard case to get around. 
The other thing is it allows management, as a matter on checklist, to see the risks in litigation and the strength of their own patent claims. What we had told earlier is that the inventor on process is great as sort of a devil's advocate process used to strengthen your own patents. But more importantly, this is a great tool in the inventor's toolbox to invent around anyone's patents or your own to strengthen them. So let's go to topic number four, uh, what I would call the invent around example. And we're gonna show a chart here that basically shows the sort of checklist and how the checklist works. Uh, we're not going to divulge the entire checklist here, uh, you know, as something that we do that's proprietary. But you can see that we have a different concept or change of technologies as point to the event around process. But you can see that some of the event around checklists is used against the entire claim in yellow or a portion of the claim in yellow, or just a phrase of the claim in yellow, or even one word of the claim. So the event around checklist. This invent around checklist can be used on an entire claim, a portion of the claim, even one word of the claim. And you can see those bars below. Some of the checklist items work very well on just pieces of the claim. Some work on the entire claim. We even have one part of the checklist that works on every part of the claim at the same time. So there's a lot of thinking around how to use a checklist and how to use a checklist to invent around a patent. So coming up, We'll learn about 10 strategies for using Invent Around, and we'll look towards the future of the Invent Around process. You're listening to Invent Anything with John Cronin. Be sure to visit us at inventanything.net. There's information, articles, and more. And you can leave your thoughts and comments there as well. That's inventanything.net. And now back to John and this episode. So now let's jump to topic number five, IP strategies for the Invent Around. There's basically litigation strategies, and there's many of them. We're going to show about four or five. And there's sort of strengthening your own IP, which is the other side of the coin. But we'll show about four or five of those. Remember, we said that when you invent around, you can either use it to get around someone else's patent for product clearance, free to operate, or maybe an infringement. But you can also use the invent around to improve your own patent systems, your own patents before you file them. So one of the first strategies for litigation is by inventing around a competitor's patent, you waive damages. If you're in a patent litigation and it's found that you willfully infringe, the judge can actually take the damages and multiply them up to 3x uh, for willful infringement. But if you could show the judge that you ran through an exercise of inventing around the patent before you created your product, uh, then they would not uh, basically assign a high uh, willful infringement level. So it's an economically great thing to do. One of the things the invent around process does is as soon as you find the invention that invents around the patent claim, you can now change your product and that will eliminate the going forwards damages. In litigation, one of the things you can do is invent around, which leads to invent on top of. And when you improve on top of a patent, you could actually patent that. And that improvement might be needed by the plaintiff. And so now you have a trading card that you can use to go back to the plaintiff and say, well, you know, we have these other patents we've just filed and they're the improvements to your patents and we're going to use them as well. So maybe we could not have the litigation go through and we'll have a cross license. And actually this does happen quite a bit. A fourth area of strategy for litigation is to invent around quickly so that what you can get back to the plaintiff and show them that you have invent arounds and you have you can have an early settlement. If I go back to my cheese melting story, it turned out that we did invent around it. And what we did is we brought the inventor back in of the original patent with the inventor's attorney and said we had this invent around that we're going to literally take these ceramic spacings and put them into every single uh, uh, cheese device and then we'll ship it. Well, it turns out that the CEO is wise enough to say, look, why don't we just give you $50,000? And we'll take a license because we don't need it, but we want to give you something. So instead of spending millions of dollars on a patent infringement, they were able to settle out the case because they had invented around. A fifth litigation strategy is really, it really informs your defense strategy where you can find out where the claims are weakest. Because what they do is they bring in witnesses and debate certain aspects of the claim. 
So if you know where the weakest parts of the claim is, it would inform the defense. One of the things you can do is straighten your own patent. And here, what you do is when you invent around, all those invent arounds can go into a robust specification. The second thing you could do for straightening your patents is create updated patents to stop others from inventing around you, which we mentioned. You'll actually find trade secrets in the event around process that you could maintain and, and hide, find improvements specifically to how you could do a part of the claim. One of the things that happens almost all the time is you find improved products. So inventing around gives you improved products. And finally, strengthening around your patents, one of the things you invent around does is create new inventions that maybe you can publish. So by publishing, you can stop others from patenting on top of you. So it's great for your business to do invent around. So let's jump to topic number six, the future of the event around process. Event around processes can be used for a lot. They can use, for instance, it can be used for patent valuation, meaning that if it's easy to invent around a patent, then the patent can be very valuable. If it's very difficult to invent around a patent, then the valuation might be higher. One thing we use invent arounds for a lot is for investors. <clears throat> they ask us to do IP due diligence. So if we can run around the patent pretty easily, we give it a low rating. One of the things is we uh, use invent around as an integral aspect of creating patent specifications. It just becomes basically a brainstorming tool. One thing the companies do once we do invent around processes with them is they then that use that pro they use that process more formally as a mechanism to determine whether they want to spend the money on filing a patent. Because if they can easily invent around the patent, they're very likely not to want to invest in it. As I mentioned, it could be used as a great brainstorming tool to generate new ideas. One of the things that happens in the future here is that the inventor around can become an, a, artificially intelligent, meaning it can automatically search for items that you're looking for or even suggest invent arounds. We see that coming. Another thing is that it can be added to a crowd-based service, such as asking others, you know, how to invent around a patent and basically putting it out to a crowd. I bought a company a number of years ago, Article and Partners, which I since sold. It was a crowd of several hundred thousand people where you could put prior art out and ask them for this patent litigation, can they find prior art? We can now ask maybe the crowd to help us invent around. And one of the things for sure is that inventing around leads to higher quality patents, as mentioned, for filing your own. Uh, one of the nice things is that inventing around a patent can be used for a strengthening or weakening a monetization effort. So if you intend on doing licensing of your patents, we have found Inventing around your own patents and creating those event arounds improves the licensing value of the original patent because what happens is the potential licensee looks at the patent they might want to license. And if they can invent around it easily, they'll probably not want to license it. They'll think, well, why don't we just invent around it? So if you have those event arounds and you own them, you can eliminate that objection. And finally, competitors' patents, when you look at them, they can be weakened with the invent around process. So if you look at the competitors' patents and you've invented around it, you're now not as afraid or concerned. So let's wrap up. In topic number one, we talked about inventing around a patent, what it is and why you should do it. We discussed reasons like free to operate, strengthening your patent. And we said it's a creative exercise. We talked about taking the devil's advocate approach, which you should do, even if it's your own patent. And it's a very powerful strategy tool. In topic number two, we talked about the ad hoc method of inventing around a patent and its limitations. We discussed really that there's no formal process for this that we found, and is basically used in an event-driven way. Unfortunately, if you are infringing a product or infringing a patent, you may be called into a litigation, and that's when you find out that you need to invent around. And basically, the attorney wants to use the invent around to do things like minimize the going forward damages or find some trading cards or get to the negotiation table more quickly. We talked about how there's really very little skill base in inventing around because it doesn't happen that most often. And, and also there's no formal processes. In topic number three, we said, well, why don't we think about this and start talking about a checklist? See, in my firm, we've developed a checklist and we do this a number of times a month and develop a, a strength in doing this. So why not have a checklist? We discussed our sort of cheese story, the cheese uh, device. That, and you can see how invent around is a real life impact because had they not been able to invent around it, they would have had to pay a significant licensing fee or not ship the product. The checklist that we've developed has been developed over years. These 18 items have been uh, developed uh, by watching the way people think and doing event arounds. 
when I started, it was just four or five on our checklist. In several years, we had 10 or 12. And after about four, four, uh, four or five years, we had a full list of 18 that we found could really invent around any pattern. One of the things is just like pilots have a checklist, it's important to use our inventing or an event around checklist to go through the entire checklist. You certainly would want the pilot to go through their entire checklist. In topic number four, we showed an example of the event around process. Specifically, what we're trying to show is you can take the items of your checklist, whether they're four or five or 18 or 20, and you use that checklist, but you use it against the entire claim, a portion of the claim, a phrase of the claim, even one word of the claim. You'd be surprised in using the event around checklist, the kind of inventions you actually come out with. Uh, but uh, it can be systematic and structured to go through a claim. In topic number five, we talked about strategies for the event around. There were litigation strategies that we mentioned, like waiving damages, 3x damages, reducing the going forward damages, developing trade secrets, early settlement discussions, early, even defense strategies. We even talked about strategies for an event around that can help strengthen your own patents before you file them, like making the specification more robust, stopping others from inventing around you, even finding trade secrets for improved products, even publishing. And finally, the future of the event around process. We find it could do many things, enhancing valuation, due diligence, used for filing or not, uses a brainstorming tool. It's a great way to strengthen and monetize the efforts. And futuristically, Maybe we'll do AI and enhance the process of inventing around using an AI tool or even get crowds involved. So thanks very much. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe and come join us on our blog and invent, any, uh, invent anything. And please listen to our new series on Inventors at Work. This is John Cronin, and we'll see you next time.